The newly re-released version of the Nike Vapor 9.5 is at least in my opinion one of the best if the not best nike tennis shoe on the market right now but number one why and number two is that a good or a bad thing so let's get into it and of course thank you to tennis point usa for sending me a pair of the re-released nike vapor 9.5s if you do want to get a pair of these they are available on tennis point right now i will leave a link in the description below now the biggest question I had right off the bat with the Vapor 9.5 is, was it a re-release, a retro, or a pro-tro? Because there is a big difference. As remember, a pro-tro is updated materials to an older shoe. Kobe Bryant kind of came up with that terminology. Whereas a retro is, it's kind of a re-release of an older shoe, but it could have different materials, whether they be bad or good. The tooling might be a little bit different, as well as the colorways might be a little bit different, the paneling. Whereas a re-release is just the exact same shoe brought back. And from what I'm seeing on these, it is a true re-release of the Vapor 9.5. And the 9.5s feature one of my very favorite sneaker components, which is integrated shoelace eyelets. They integrate right into the body of the uppers. This gives such a superior lockdown because the surface area of what the shoelaces are tying down is so large. Plus, because it is a longer area that the shoelace is coming into contact with, you're less likely to bust through the shoelace eyelet or the shoelace itself. Just a little bit more of a durable construct. Now, on the 9.5, you do get a runner's knot option. So if you do experience heel slippage not using it, you can just go to the runner's knot and you shouldn't have a problem. And speaking of this, if you do want a guide to shoelacing, kind of some different techniques, I actually do have a free guide in the description. I will leave that link down below. However, I think the biggest difference between the 9.5s and some updated Nike tennis shoe models, as well as just updated tennis shoe models in general, is just kind of the overall construction of the body, the uppers. Now the meshing on the 9.5s is actually a little bit chunkier, a little bit more substantial than shoes now. Now, and it's interesting when you put these on, you almost feel like you're putting on an old pair of air oscillates or something that Pete Sampras would have worn in the 90s because the uppers just feel a little bit chunkier, just a little bit more enveloping. They don't feel as light as some of the newer materials out there. And for some people, that's a good thing. Others, it's a bad thing. And I guess I'll start with the good parts first. You know, a lot of newer materials on basketball and tennis shoes, they're meant to be as light and breathable as humanly possible. And that's why you see a lot of people kind of get angry or kind of start to moan and complain about materials on new shoes not being premium leather or suede, but in my opinion, some of these newer, lighter materials offer similar upper durability and similar lockdown, but just with a lot lighter of a profile, a lot more breathable of a profile. And if you look at the Vapor 9.5s though, when you lace them down, it definitely feels a lot more substantial on foot. You know, it definitely feels like you're kind of being harnessed in the shoe a little bit more of those materials, at least psychologically don't feel like they're gonna buckle. But if you look at the bad part of these, you look at the breathability test, these things heated up 158.1 degrees. They cooled down 73.1 degrees. I found that the biggest radiating part of the shoe, kind of where the heat was escaping was right at the distal end of the tongue and the thing about that I don't like is this tongue is only attached right at the end just one piece of stitching here in the forefoot so there is a little bit of a gap there I was wearing kind of neon green socks that day and I could see it poking through the shoe so it's no wonder that's where heat escapes most of it however it, versus some other newer shoes out there and some other lighter materials these definitely hold on to heat more especially because they are built as more of a minimalist more speed focused shoe but that pretty substantial meshing combined with the integration as well as the really rugged drag guard and the TPU chassis that goes all the way from the lateral side all the way to the medial heel. You know, you can't deny that these are definitely more of a containing minimalist shoe versus the Vapor 10 or the Vapor Pro. Now the Vapor 11 and Vapor Pro 2, yeah, they have some similar containment to these, except that they're so much bulkier and so much more bottom heavy versus the 9.5. So you're getting the same feelings of security in the 9.5 without the bulk and the heft and the bottom heaviness of the newer models of the Vapor line. And if you look at that drag guard and the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grid sandpaper, I mean, the burr really does not get through that drag guard whatsoever. It just basically makes a scuff on it. And what I really like is that drag guard material is integrated into the first two eyelets of the lace line. So if you are a little bit more of an extreme dragger, you are going to hit that versus the uppers of the shoes. They do stay a little bit more durable than some other shoes in its class, namely the Vapor 10 or the Vapor Pro. But when you look at the midsole teardown, you can see this is really a true re-release. You get one zoom air unit in the back. You can actually see it if you take out the insole, you can see the indentation of it. And you get a pretty steep drop here from the arch into the forefoot. And this is just an entire bed of Nike Phylon. It is a very springy, more elastic feeling Nike Phylon. It does give these a nice, light, nimble pop 
appetite feeling when you're trying to get up to a serve or just trying to jump or pop up off the ground. And that combined with this shank here, it isn't the widest or broadest shank out there, but it does get the job done and it gets the job done while not bulking the shoe up too much. And if you look at these on the jump pipe test, got 18.5 centimeters, which isn't the best I've gotten this year. It's not the best shoe by any means this year. However, it's the feeling you get when you're trying to get up off the ground on these. They're such an easy shoe to get that first step off of, especially when you take into account the outsole tread, which we'll talk about in a second. But in terms of that initial launch on these, or just kind of getting up for serves over and over again, they're just such an unencumbering shoe. They're just, they feel really good getting up off the ground. So even though they don't give you the most elite snap off the ground, they are very easy to get off the ground and just psychologically, they're an easy shoe to move and kind of glide through the air with. And just kind of backing up those stats, look at the bounce height test, 38.5 centimeters in the heel, and then 31.5 centimeters in the forefoot. And it is pretty standard amongst a Phylon shoe. I would have thought the Zoom Air unit would have gotten a little bit more. And, and I think that does translate to these in the real world. Whereas, yeah, this is really good for crash landings or for forgiveness. But in terms of this Zoom Air unit here actually aiding in popping up off the ground or jump height or kind of launch of the shoe, I think it's more meant for comfort. The, the more thing that's doing the work is the shank and the forefoot on the vapors and as well as your own muscles in your leg. But getting into the tread of the Vapor 9.5, this is where you really know the OGs could really slide on a hard court without the really sliding first type treads. This is a two level herringbone, little bit of a flatter herringbone under the big toe joint for better pivoting, a little bit chunkier on the lateral side for digging in more on the court than a really chunky one in the heel. However, you know, these breathing channels here in the shoe, they're not the most conducive to sliding. You definitely can slide in these, but you definitely have to be a pretty good slider. You gotta be more kind of have that pro level footwork to slide in these versus some of the new Vapor shoes, which they're just such flat tread, they're just meant to slide. If you can't slide in them, then you're probably doing something wrong. I personally like this tread a little bit better because I like to grip into the court. I don't like to slide as much. So if you are looking for a shoe for really good traction, these are really good. Even on a clay court, I found these to be good when I was testing these out like way back in the day, as well as on some old takedown Nike shoes that had the same tread pattern. But you know, looking at the speed ratio, the Vapor 9.5, they come in at a 2.29, which isn't bad by any means. It's not super elite like some other shoes we've seen, especially in the running space. However, the speed ratio does not take into account Count of the grip of the treads and how good these things get up off the line. So, you know, yeah, the Vapor 9.5s are still a little bit heavier than some newer, more minimalist shoes, not in the Nike feeling, but some other shoes. However, for the grip they give you, as well as the confidence they give you when kind of turn on the jets with the chassis on the lateral side, as well as the shank, you know, these are still a pretty speedy shoe, especially with the Nike XDR rubber in these. I mean, if you look at the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, not even a millimeter of damage on this. This is some of Nike's hardest rubber. You can get the durometer on these it is really off the charts as well. So, you know, if you are a slider, they're going to hold up decently well. However, if you are someone who likes to pivot really hard, get a lot of grip, they're going to hold up as well too. So I would say really on these, it's a really great true all court tread pattern. And getting into the fit of the 9.5s, you can see the forefoot of these is just a little bit bulkier, a little bit more bulbous than some other shoes out there. So a narrow, medium, wide with foot, I think can just go true to size. If you are any bit of a snake bitten type foot, I think heel paint on these, they're fine because that big zoom area, you know, a lot of forgiveness. However, remember there's not much in the forefoot of these. So if you can get an orthotic in these, um, then I think really ball of foot pain, arch pain, they're great just because like I said, the chassis and the shank, very good. For a more minimalist shoe, they're really not bad for ankle spraining either because the flange is pretty wide. So, you know, I think if you can augment them, then I think they're fine for a snake bitten foot on their own though. Anything like four foot arch type pain, um, there's probably something better out there, but because the lockdown on these is so good, um, like I said, throwing an orthotic in these makes them kind of get up to that more elite level. But finally, the all important playability, the 9.5s. I mean, you've seen them on tour for years now. People are still wearing them. That's why they're back. They are a very easy shoe to play in. They do most things well. They grip from low positions really well. Like I said, they pop up off the ground really easily, very nimbly, even though they are a little bit heavier than some other shoes in the market, kind of in their more minimalist class. That's because you get a lot for that weight. You get good lockdown for the weight. You get that chassis for the weight in them. You know, like I said, the, the rubber on these is very good for grip. So I would say anything from like a real retriever on the baseline, even up to a serve and volleyer on these, really just they're an all court shoe. They're an all court speed focused shoe. So if you want something more substantial that you can also haul in, especially if you want a Nike shoe, 
And I think you probably should grab a few pairs of these. I don't think they're gonna be on the market for all that long. I think they're gonna see how the re-release goes. And then, at least in my hope, they take all the design and the engineering from something like the 9.5, even to me, the Vapor 10, the GP Turbo, and they put it into newer lines of shoes. They put it up with some more updated materials like Nike Sphere, you know, double stack, Zoom, things like that. So, like I said, I'm glad they brought them out but my real hope is that they take the engineering, the design, and everything that people like on these shoes, especially some people in the pro game, and put new exciting models out into the market like they did just a couple years ago with the GP Turbo, which most people really liked. You know, I don't have a lot of bad comments in the comment section of the GP Turbo shoes. But most people really like, even if they didn't like the shoes, they liked the attempt. They liked the at bat that Nike took, you know, bringing something a little bit more exciting to the table, a little bit more tech in a shoe. So at least for me, like I said, glad they're out there. Would like to see this in an updated model, in a new model, I should say. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'd love to know if you are going and buying a couple pairs of these because I know for me, I'm probably gonna get, I'm probably gonna actually gonna go buy a few more of these just to kind of stock up because I personally like this shoe and I know years down the road, I'm probably gonna wanna revisit them when comparing other Nike shoes. So I'd love to hear your comments down below. And if you wanna see the older siblings to the Vapor 9.5, the Vapor Pro 2 and the Vapor 11, I will leave a special playlist linked up here above and make sure you subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and retros, protros and re-release shoes. See you in the next one.